Hello and greetings from Iceland, but I have some updates today, since uh, things have been happening out there by the volcano, and I just wanted some answers before I would uh, dive in, and you might have noticed that uh, three days ago the word got out that the eruption had come to an end, but then two days ago it picked up again, the lava came flowing, so the day before yesterday it was a great show and the tourist industry cheered. And the recent changes in the volcanic activity and volcanic tremor could possibly be explained with a crater rim collapse. And the experts also said that even we didn't see any lava coming up there for a while, it's still possible that it was pumping, but only through underground channels. But then it came up, the red stuff, and... Uh, I started to hear some uh, theories from uh, the part of experts who are willing to talk about their job. The first one was that uh, the volcano is either on the way to stop or the magma is simply seeking uh, new routes. So we might expect to see a new crater. And uh, yesterday I found this interview with a volcanologist. And uh, that's a guy who has been uh, not afraid to uh, express his views on the situation. And he said that his feeling is that this will continue. And if it were to come to an end, the signs would be different. It would take more time than it took two days ago. And he said also that this volcano has already broken all known and traditional behavior patterns. So it's just really hard to see what he is going to do next. And we have noticed that... This volcano has gone through several uh, quiet points since the eruption started in March, but the lava flow has always uh, picked up again. And uh, judging from the lava flow last two nights, it is uh, very hard to see that this is coming to an end. Leaving us with the question, is this volcano up to something more? So once again, we are stuck with uh, more questions than answers. So I'm going to move down by the end of the lava stream now, close to the farmhouse at risk, and the lava has already crawled uh, all the way through the North High Valley. And the civil defense did actually make this uh, last minute decision to build uh, yet another barrier. Not a big one this time. Just enough to buy us some time. And if the eruption would have uh, come to an end, or is about to come to an end in the next two weeks, this barrier might just do it for the farmhouse. So I think it was a good move. And the South Coast Road uh, remains open. But looking at the lava flow for the last two nights, I somehow have the feeling that uh, this barrier might only hold for maybe one, two weeks. And after that, it's nothing that we can do. And uh, I was actually listening to a radio interview with one of the owners the other day. And this farmhouse is today just used as a summer house. And it is the children of the last farmer who lived there, who own it now. And the woman in the interview said that uh, she was getting her kids ready for bad news, since they love to be there. But then, we have to be thankful that the town Grindavík is not at risk, not at this moment, but to lose that town is by far the biggest threat that we face, or to lose the home of over 3,000 people. And I'm reminding you about the video series I've got online about this town, Grindavík. And uh, finally, I want to mention this uh, new problem, or the air quality, but we have been rather lucky until now. And yesterday there was this blue cloud over the city and uh, it contained uh, droplets of uh, sulfuric acid and some of the pollution that is uh, hovering over Reykjavik now has to do with uh, chemical reactions from the accumulated pollution that the wind has been blowing around for the last months. So residents in Reykjavik with underlying uh, respiratory problems were encouraged to stay indoors yesterday. And I heard it also from an expert that uh, this was a mini version of the so-called uh, mist hardships, or just a sample of what Icelanders experienced in the year 1783, or after the uh, huge uh, lucky eruption that originated from the Grimsvatn volcano system. And the blue mist that was all over the country after that eruption it killed around 20 to 25 percent of all Icelanders and over 50 percent of all livestock. So what Reykjavik got yesterday was a mini version of that. 
And I think, and I have mentioned it before on my channel, that uh, gas pollution might be the most serious threat that we face on the southwest corner of Iceland. But it is a situation that uh, has been getting very little discussion, too little for my taste. But we do know for a fact that it is impossible to evacuate the greater capital region, not just due to the road systems, but we are talking about that 80% of the nation is living close by this volcano or within a 40 km radius. So poisonous mist is not what we need there. And that reminds me about this question I have been seeing on a regular basis in my comment section. Or is it possible to move the capital or should it move? And that is a big question and I will answer it in another video since uh, I have already thought about it. And we are at least forced to rethink all the new building land. And I have always had plenty to say about how we built here in Iceland and where. So you will have to wait a bit longer for that video. But I just need some additional footage to do it the way I want to do it. And if you are a tourist in Iceland now, the tourist tip of the day is this link to the air quality monitors. But I want to say also that uh, there are particles moving around in air now that the air quality monitors do not read correctly. So while this situation is going on, they are not covering the full story. And I'm also leaving a link to the gas pollution forecast based on wind directions. So if you are a tourist in Iceland now, I would recommend that you would finish the golden circle like most uh, tourists do, but uh, do it a bit differently. Go through Thingvellir Park, Geysir the hot springs and when you are up by Gullfoss waterfall, it's possible to drive straight over the islands up north. Fantastic road that uh, you can only see two or three months a year. It's not a road for all cars. It's a bit bumpy ride, depends a bit on how the winter treated the road, but it is worth it. Just like the fresh air here in northern Iceland is worth it. Now during the best time of year, where the midnight sun is like nothing else. And with that, I'm sending you sunny regards from North Iceland. Mm -hmm.